What is up everybody and welcome back to the Mid-Level Media channel, your hub for everything physical media and entertainment. I'm Ken here today to talk about and review the latest Arrow video release of Legend, a film directed by Ridley Scott and starring Tom Cruise. It is a fantasy film from the 80s and I'm going to get into it. I'm going to talk about this uh, Arrow release, this big box Arrow release that looks absolutely fantastic. But before I get into it guys, I want to ask that if you are not yet a subscriber of the Mid-Level Media channel, what do you do? And hit that subscribe button for more great content. I do all kinds of stuff on this channel, mostly centered around the world of physical media. I do Blu-ray and 4K reviews like this of mainstream titles, boutique labels, all that stuff. I do the physical media report every single Monday where I run down all the latest and greatest in the world of Blu-rays and 4Ks. I also do vlog videos, Tuesday out and about videos where I take you to the stores and show you all the new releases, collection updates, just tons of physical media based content on this channel every single day. And I would definitely appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. Also be sure to like this video guys. Every single like will help this channel out and help it grow and I would definitely appreciate it. Also be sure to comment down below guys. What are your thoughts on Legend? Um, have you seen the movie? Did you get this Arrow release? Because I'm hearing some people had delays with this one, which absolutely sucks. But did you get this release? What are your thoughts on this? Is it one of your favorite fantasy films? Is it one of your favorite Ridley Scott films? Hell, is it one of your favorite Tom Cruise movies? Let me know in that comment section below. Let's have a discussion about Legend because this was a first time watch for me, guys. We're going to talk about the movie. We're going to talk about the, the audio visual quality. We're going to talk about the special features. We're going to talk about uh, the box set. Like I said, I'm going to do an unboxing of it. I'm going to take you to the table, show you the full contents of the packaging. First thing, let's get into talking about this film. This is a film from 1985. So this movie came out the year... Uh, that I was born and like I said I had never seen this movie I've always heard of it I always remember Tim Curry's character of the devil or darkness as I think that he's called in the movie um, so I've always known that image but I yeah I've just never seen this movie but yeah like I said you got Tom Cruise you got Tim Curry you also have Mia Sarah who is also in the film Ferris Bueller's Day Off she was Ferris's girlfriend so it's a pretty stacked cast in this film uh, director Ridley Scott I think this was his fourth feature film he had done um, Alien at this point, he had done Blade Runner, and then he did uh, Legend, I think another film in there, but I'm, I'm not really sure what. And he even talks about in the special features, one of them that I watched, I think it was a documentary uh, from 2000 about how he kind of was looking to get more into like real films or like real characters and stuff. And he was kind of doing these genre films before that. And this was his like last genre film because he wanted to do a fantasy uh, before he started diving into more films like I guess Thelma and Louise or some of the other like mainstream like real character type films. Right off the bat just gonna say that I did watch the theatrical cut and the director's cut and I rarely do that uh, with the movies that I get especially the Arrow because I think that Waterworld had like five different cuts and I did not watch all of those but I felt compelled to do so with this one because I watched the theatrical cut first um, and we'll talk about the audio visual quality for both of these uh, discs because they are on separate discs. I watched the theatrical cut first. I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed the movie but it, it, it felt like there was something missing. It felt like it was very fast paced. It didn't feel like it flowed properly. Um, and I know as is the case with uh, Blade Runner, the final cut, the director's cut, like those cuts to me are better versions of the theatrical cut of Blade Runner. So I thought, you know, it's Ridley Scott. His director cuts are usually better um, than the actual theatrical cut. So I went ahead and I watched the director's cut as well. And I did enjoy it quite a bit more. I still had my problems with the movie. Um, but you know, fantasy has never been like a favorite genre of mine, this type of movie. Like I like never ending story and that's kind of what it reminded me of, um, a little bit with that kind of just the eighties aesthetic and the fantasy and stuff like that. But I've never been the biggest fan of the fantasy genre. So getting into this and, and actually enjoying it, having it resonate with me was a little bit of an uphill battle. But getting into some of the scenes I really liked about the film, I love the scenery. It had beautiful scenery, uh, set design, the makeup effects were completely fantastic. Like Tim Curry looks awesome in, in this uh, makeup. And um, the inter another interesting thing is another September release that came out at the beginning of the month. The Thing on 4K, Rob Botten did the special makeup effects for that movie and he also um, did them on this movie. So it's no surprise to me why uh, they are so good. But yeah, the Tim Curry's makeup looks great. All of the goblins and, and creatures in this movie really look fantastic. Some of the little fairy 
uh, characters as well. So everything, as far as like just aesthetically, like this movie looks really good. Like the set design and stuff are done extremely well. Like the layer that they get into in the end. And another interesting to note with this one is it actually had some trouble in the production, which I didn't know about, but it has it on the back of this Arrow video case. So it says, despite a troubled production in which the elaborate full-size forest set was accidentally incinerated in a lengthy post-production that resulted in multiple versions of the film. So I guess it's saying that there was a fire during the production of this, and maybe that's why they had to cut some stuff out for the theatrical version, and then they went back in uh, to add stuff when they got things restored, but they didn't have time to get it in there and editing, maybe. Uh, that was the case, but yeah, it's still very impressive. Scenery looks fantastic. Tim Curry, like I said, is fantastic in the role. It's just you don't really get... Um, a lot of him until you get into that final act and they they almost cut him out completely because uh, he's in more of the film and the theatrical cut and then the director's cut it's like they're trying to hide him um, throughout the movie like there's a, a, right in the right in the beginning they show him in the theatrical cut talking to the other goblin about going to the mainland and stopping the two uh, kids from and the unicorns and all that stuff and taking them out and killing them or whatever and you see Tim Curry conversing back and forth. They keep cutting to him. But in the director's cut, they just show the back of the chair as he's talking to the goblin. They don't ever show him. So you don't get the full look of him until you get into that final act uh, with him and Mira Sarah and how he's trying to like kind of seduce her into uh, being his wife or, or whatever he's trying to do. But um, one thing too, right off the top, like right when this movie starts, we get like the longest exposition dump ever i've seen in texas is like more than star wars it like just keeps going on and on just explaining everything this entire world uh just like the whole setup for like the unicorns and how they kind of keep the darkness away in the world and that's another thing about this movie like there's just a ton of exposition throughout like it's literally just characters interacting uh, with each other just like explaining the world and giving you the setup for every little thing. So you know about this movie, you know about this world when you're going through it because they are literally explaining everything to you um, along the way, which doesn't always work. And to be honest, it doesn't really work in this movie either. So um, another thing, guys, Tom Cruise, he's like one of the biggest actors working today. He's one of the biggest actors working today, probably for the last 30 years. It's very strange seeing him in this kind of role. It's almost like a, a Peter Pan uh, type performance. Like he's very like light and fluffy and just the way he like delivers his dialogue. And um, it's just strange seeing Tom in, in this kind of performance. But that being said, um, he still has that classic Tom swagger. He's still swooping in uh, to make out with the girl and, and kind of using his charm and charisma to get out of certain situations. There's a scene with him, actually pretty funny, where he's trying to, um, you know, basically convince this like witch character that she's beautiful. He keeps trying to get her to look into his mirror um, his shield like as a mirror and trying to convince her that she actually is beautiful kind trying to you know sweet talk her in essence to get what he wants it's like only Tom Cruise can sweet talk uh, a hideous witch character so um, but yeah guys it's a very 80s fantasy it feels very much of its time like I said I enjoyed the movie um, but like I said I, I watched both cuts I watched the theatrical I watched the um, the director's cut. And another thing that you got to note with this is you have two different scores and soundtracks. So in the first one, um, the theatrical cut, you have Tangerine Dream, um, which wasn't the initial choice to score it. It was Jerry Goldsmith, but they kind of went with Tangerine Dream for the theatrical cut, which makes this movie sound and feel a lot more 80s because uh, they're a lot more like kind of synth wave uh, just a very 80s style. And then you get Jerry Goldsmith's score in the director's cut, which makes it feel a little bit darker, um, a little bit more fantasy driven, just that kind of classic orchestral score uh, that honestly I much preferred and just completely changes the tone of the entire film. It's still very 80s and dare I say cheesy. And the main, another main problem with this movie is the acting in this film. The dialogue is very wooden, it's very overdramatic. You don't really feel the emotion in any of the characters, um, except for one, that little, uh, like kind of, the little, like, kid that has, like, a man voice, almost. Um, it was a very strange character, that's all I'll say. It's very unnatural uh, feeling. It doesn't feel like the way that, like, normal characters and people would talk to each other. Um, which it's a fantasy world. So like I understand that again That's another reason why like fantasy just kind of isn't my thing um, But yeah overall guys, I, I had fun with this movie the theatrical cut 
I still enjoyed, I think I enjoyed the director's cut though a lot more. And I think a lot of that had to do uh, with that score by Jerry Goldsmith. It just made, it made me take the film a little bit more uh, seriously. You know, and also with the director's cut, like it really just feels like it allows the scenes to just play out a little bit more. Like the whole scene with uh, Mia Sara's character touching the unicorn that kind of is the catalyst for the um, the events of the entire movie. It kind of, that's a little bit more drawn out. It's a little bit more dramatic. Um, and it, it kind of feels a little bit more important just the way that they, dra they, they drag it out in the uh, director's cut. So I like that cut a lot more. So I would probably give the director's cut like a 3.5 and then I give the theatrical cut like a three out of a five. So again, I enjoyed them both, but the director's cut does make this a significantly uh, better film in my opinion. So getting into the transfer, and this again is another spot where it becomes kind of interesting because the theatrical cut is a 2K restoration um, and a 4K scan of the original camera negative. So they were not able to get the original camera negative for the director's cut. And a lot of people were very disappointed um, as to why they couldn't do a 4K for this one. And they have an entire article about it on Collider uh, that I actually read the whole thing of about it. So if you really wanna get into why they couldn't do the 4K, there's an entire explanation, but basically they lost uh, the, the original camera negative of that cut. And if they tried to do it based on the materials that they had, I think from the, uh, uh, the 2000 DVD that they did the, the director's cut for when they first released it, if they tried to do it based off of that transfer, it wasn't really gonna look any better. And I think they said it might've looked a little bit worse than a regular Blu-ray release if they would have tried to have done it. So they did do the 2K and the 4K scan on the theatrical cut. So the theatrical cut looks significantly better than the director's cut. So you have the director's cut, which is a better movie that doesn't look as good. And then you have the theatrical cut, which is a worse movie that looks fantastic. Like you really get some of the detail um, in that theatrical cut. Like you can just tell like the scenery is everything's the colors are a lot more vibrant in that scan. You can tell like the facial detail. It almost looks 4K, which in a lot of cases with the 4K scans, um, that's like the step right before the actual 4K transfer. So you can really tell that it, it looks almost straight up like a 4K transfer. It looks fantastic, almost immaculate with that uh, particular cut. But yeah, that's the disappointing thing about this one is the actual like definitive version of the film doesn't look as good. And then you got the theatrical cut that looks perfect. So it's a little give and take on that. But yeah, like great detail on the faces in that one. Like the goblins, like the, the when they do the close-ups on their faces, it looks so like incredibly like gooey um, in their face because they have like slime and stuff on their faces. And yeah, it just looks uh, fantastic. But you know, there's a little film grain here and there with this one. But honestly, with that, with that theatrical cut, like it just, it looked pretty stunning like the entire way through uh, to me, I didn't notice much grain at all. It looked like a movie that was honestly filmed like two years ago or something. Like it looked very modern. So yeah, with that director's cut, you do just get the regular HD uh, transfer. It just looks like a Blu-ray that came out in like 2009 or something. As far as the audio, good audio. Like I said, I'm just rocking a sound bar. So you get the 5.1 DTS master audio. So right there, everything sounded great to me. This is a movie that I think uh, would lend itself well uh, to that surround sound because you are outside a lot. So all of the kind of bugs and chirping and sound effects that are going on around you um, probably comes off pretty good. Let's get into this packaging, guys, because like Aero Video, I've said it time and time again, they are killing it in the boutique game, just releasing these quality um, transfers for these cult classic films with some of the best packaging. These hard box cases right here, guys, is just absolutely fantastic. I love them and they're always coming with like these big booklets in here. Look at this thing. And I'm gonna go to the table and I'm gonna do a whole unboxing. So I'm gonna show you all um, the whole thing while I'm doing that. But yeah, this booklet right here, guys, awesome stuff in there awesome stuff in there you get these cards and i don't know if they're postcards or what these are i don't even know if i want to open this thing but i'm gonna go ahead and open it you get these like postcards right here and yeah these are like i don't know if they're if they're full-on uh, postcards or not they're they look like they honestly look like pictures you would take and get developed um at a at a um God, what do you call that? <laughs> uh, what do you call that? The one hour photo place? 
Um, but yeah, this is the character I was talking about. This guy right here, uh, he was something else. And then you got, yeah, this girl too was also something else. She had it in for Tom the whole movie. Uh, she had the hots for him. And then you got Tom right there with the shield. It, it was cool seeing Tom in that kind of, uh, that kind of role for sure. Um, but yeah, they look like they were developed. It looks like you would take these pictures with a disposable camera and then take them to the, what do you call that? The film development store? I God, why am I so blanking on everything when I talk? Uh, but yeah, that, these are cool cards, guys, definitely. And then you get this awesome poster right here. Um, you get the, the Arrow video artwork, which is absolutely fantastic. And then you get that original poster um, on the back as well, which is super cool. So getting into the actual case, uh, I already have this flip because I do uh, flip that artwork, the reversible cover art, usually when I get them. Then you have some cool discs in there, guys, with the disc art. You got Tim Curry on that one. I think that's the director's cut. And then you have uh, Mia Sarah and Tom Cruise on that release right there. And then you get even more cards inside. And these are more like the, the postcards in here, guys. So some really cool stuff in this package, guys. Some really excellent stuff like Arrow. They just, they blow me away with some of the stuff that they do. It's just absolutely fantastic. And then I'll reverse this and kind of show you all um, this stuff as well. So yeah, right there guys, great packaging, great box set by Arrow Video. It's just fantastic. And we're not done yet because we had the extras um, and the special features to talk about as well. So with this one, uh, it has one new special feature with this release and all of the rest of them um, are past special features for the DVDs, for the uh, past Blu-ray releases. I think you get a new director's commentary as well. So you get a brand new audio commentary uh, by Paul M. Salmon, author of Ridley Scott, The Making of His Movies. You also get a reconstructed isolated score track by Tangerine Dream from 2002 and an isolated music and effects track, Remembering a Legend, a brand new special featurette interviewing Grip David Cadwell, um, production supervisor Hugh Harlow, and costume designer Charles Node, co-star Annabelle Landon, camera operator Peter McDonald, sec decorator Ann Molo, and draftsman John Ralph. So tons of people that were involved in the making of this film, kind of doing a round table retrospective on the film of Legend. So it's a really good, um, little kind of like documentary. I did watch the entire one of that. I also watched, uh, most of the 2001. I think it's on the director's cut disc. I'm trying to think, uh, where that, which one that was like, but anyway, it had Ridley Scott on it from 2000, uh, talking about legend. I, I really enjoyed that one. Just listening to Ridley Scott, uh, talking about the movie. So yeah, as would expect with most of these arrow releases, it's just across the board. Fantastic packaging, special features. The transfer on the theatrical cut looks fantastic, immaculate. But if you want to watch the director's cut, you don't get the same treatment there. But again, there was a lot of stuff surrounding um, that, that that's not really Arrow's fault why they couldn't uh, do the full restoration on that. With that, guys, we are done with this review of Legend, this Arrow video release. And I have to say at the end of the day, guys, I would absolutely recommend this. If you're a fan of Legend, especially, I know a lot of people have a lot of nostalgia for this one. I don't as far as the movie, but I'm still super happy to have this in my collection. This is one I, I could definitely see myself re-watching um, and enjoying just for its kind of like, you know, 80s uh, uh, aesthetic and just kind of fantasy-driven storytelling. So I like this movie. I love this release. Tons of cool stuff in this set, guys. So I absolutely recommend it. I will be leaving the link for purchase in the description below if you want to use that link it is an amazon affiliate link and i would definitely appreciate it so yeah guys be sure to comment down below your thoughts on legends subscribe to the channel if you haven't already hit that like button turn on all those bell notifications for future videos and we'll see you next time